Hi, and welcome to the London Free Press Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Gilbert. London's favorite hockey team begins their regular season this week. So we are talking with, of course, London Free Press sports reporter Ryan Pyatt about the upcoming season, which players to watch, and then take a look around the league. Hi, Ryan. How are you? Hi, Rachel. It's great to be back with you here. Yeah, we just uh, talked about the London Majors last time, and they they won the championship, which was amazing. Yeah, no, I know. And, I, you know, I think the Knights, you, you, you think of uh, Western won the Vanier Cup last year, the London Lightning won another championship, the Majors, I, the Beefeaters won their league. You, you know, I think the Knights are sitting there and saying, hey, it, it, we got to get in on this action too. Yeah, now it's their turn, right? So yeah. let's let's kind of look ahead to um, maybe what the season might bring. Um, touch on the preseason a little bit, though. And how did preseason go for the Knights? Because we know that they they start their regular season Friday. Yeah, and and this year it's a little later. They start a little later than usual. Um, that that's just something that came out of the pandemic. And uh, NHL camps are going, so they're they're going to start right at the end of September, uh, which I think is interesting. And uh, usually they'd have a game or two into the season by now, but they, they did, the Knights did, the Hunters did something really interesting with the preseason this year. They only played four games. They played two against Sarnia and they played two against Erie. And they, uh, you know, what, what they did, uh, and, they, and they won three out of the four. Um, it, it, a lot of entertaining games, which is a good sign of things to come, but um, they, they, they had two at the start of the month and then they took a week off just to, because they knew guys were going away and they they get to teach the young guys the uh, the new new guys coming in and the guys that you know didn't get as much time the last couple of years because of the craziness of the pandemic and yeah. um and and they really went through the systems and the structure that they want to play and then they played a couple of games against Erie and here they are uh, some teams play six sometimes you know some teams play a few more games to get other looks of guys but you know I think the Knights um, had a pretty good idea how that how their team would look uh, pretty early on here. Yeah, and we just had a little bit of uh, shuffling. We just lost Liam Gilmartin, um, one of the top scorers on the team too, right? Yeah, 100%. He's a big power forward at, uh, from the States, and he's going to Erie. Uh, the Knights just felt like they had um, – they don't have a ton of veteran uh, presence up front, but they have a lot of good young guys. I think of Denver Barkey and Easton Cowan and um, a few guys like that. Uh, Landon Sim coming back and he should take a big jump this year at, at age 18 and, and Brody Crane and Ben Bujold and, and they're just going to, you know, put their faith that these guys are going to take that next step because I think there's a lot of people that missed their first year or it would have been their second year because of that, that shutdown of the season. And, and they're thinking, well, this is kind of, there, there's nobody really better than the, than the hunters that, you know, projecting the way guys are going to turn out. And and they think that they'd like to give the guys the ice time, and and, and they want to they want to win, but they want to they want these guys to do it. So um, you know, a few of the older guys they'll, they'll be a bit uh, younger than uh, I think most teams are used to. Like you think of last year, and it was like Luke Evangelista and Antonio Stranges. Those, those were the guys, right? That were scoring yeah. Cody Morgan too. That were scoring the goals, and it's gonna be it's gonna be a much different team that way. Yeah. So what, cause it is, it is kind of a younger team uh, this year. So what's the strategy with, with keeping a lot of those young guys and, ha and, and having a good defense uh, defense system too. Yeah, I think so. I, I think the Knights will arguably have, if not the best, one of the best blue lines and goal and goaltending situations in, in the entire OHL. And you see this from time to time. I don't think they're going to, um, blow the scoreboard off it off off its moorings um, every night. You know, like you know, four or five goals would be a, an excellent night for them. They're not going to be. If you remember Mitch Mar when Marner was here and Chuck Dvorak, they would. You know, the other teams had to play a defensive shell, or they get eight or nine <laughs> hung on them. And that's not yeah. this team. This team's going to be a hardworking kind of a skilled team and a fast team, but but kind of a hardworking team that's going to have to earn their goals. That's what I saw in the, in the preseason so far that. You know, you know, you don't want to take off a night against the against the Knights because they'll burn you. But they're mm -hmm. they're built from the back out this year, and I think you know Brett Brochu coming back for an overage year, which there was some question throughout the you know since last season ended if if he'd be back, if he might end up in the pros, and he's back again, and he was the best goalie in the league last year. So you you would think that you know another year of maturity, more year of strength, that uh, and a fire in his belly to. Uh, to, to show that he, he deserves a, a pro contract after playing 
you know, he was a world junior goalie, right? One of the three yeah. world junior goalies. So you think that Brett, uh, if he stays healthy, right? He had at the end of the year, he missed the end of the year with a, with an ankle injury and surgery and then came back for the playoffs, but it wasn't obviously wasn't a hundred percent in the Kitchener series. And so he's good. There's a lot of fuel there for him. And if right. he can be one of the best players in the league, then, and, and you got that good night's defense, uh, you know, in front of them, then uh, it, it takes the pressure off the guys up front. You know, we might only have to score three or four goals to win a game, which is nice. I, I think the number, I'm always told that the number is 50. If you can score 50 more goals, like for instance, if you can score 250 goals in a season, the, the real good OHL teams get about 300. Like Windsor had 305 last year mm-hmm. and, and they made it to the finals. But if you can get about 250 and only allow 200 goals, you're going to win 40 to 50 hockey games. That's what, that's the kind of the equation that people look at. Sure. And, and you expect development, I assume throughout the year and uh, some of these young guys to get better and better, obviously over the season to score more throughout the year. Yeah. And we I, I, we, it, we it, like to watch exciting games, right? <laughs> Hundred yeah. percent. Hey, yeah. Friday nights at the bud, you, the nights better win, right? That's that's always yeah. been the yeah, thing. That you right. gotta you gotta win those games. And I I think what we'll see early in the season is there's power play spots. So you know, obviously, you get points. You know, for the the kids, they want to get points. They want to score 30, 40 goals. Mm-hmm. That, and that's gonna come on the power play. You got you have to score on the power play in order to to be like like Evangelista and Stranges. They got a ton of goals on the power play last year. So. Uh, yeah. that's, that's what you need to put up big numbers in the league. And so I think there'll be a little bit of jockeying among eight or nine, 10 guys for those spots. And mm-hmm. it should be interesting, but I, I think I, I kind of am excited about the fact that not all their eggs are in one basket offensively this year, that instead of just going to Luke all the time or, or making Antonio's got to go through every deep through everybody, we're going to see a bit more balance, a bit more. Uh, three or four scoring lines which which they they didn't have against Kitchener and it cost them and and when Luke got cold and he, he didn't score very much in the playoffs that that cost him the series right like that right a, a lot of other factors there but that was not being able to get that one key goal uh they, they get to game seven and in overtime and they don't they don't they don't get it right so they know that and they think that with a little more balance here from three or four lines that they'll be uh they'll, they'll be a bit different offense a bit, a bit more varied this year yeah. Let's talk about, since you mentioned Kitchener, some of the other teams in the league and maybe how the Knights might compare against uh, some of those this year. Uh, the CHL uh, stats just came out. I think Guelph is kind of predicted to be number one. Is that right? Yeah. They're, they're, so the Canadian Hockey League, they do a pretty good job of, of figuring out who the preseason favorites are. You know, they always usually put the night. I was kind of surprised not to see the Knights in there because they usually are. Uh, you know, even as an honorable mention or a 10 or something like that. But, but Guelph, I, last year, like obviously the Knights played in their conference. So we all saw Guelph, Kitchener, Owen Sound 10 times. It, it, it got a little sickening uh, watching the same teams all the time. But, but this Guelph team is, is, a, is a, they, they don't lose very much. They get almost all their whole team back. So that's in junior hockey, that's a big thing. If you got a lot of 2019 and, and good 18 year olds, you know, you can go on a, a long run. And I thought one thing that was interesting is George Burnett, who I really respect as a coach. I think he's one of the, you know, him and Dale Hunter, a, a very veteran, very savvy coaches. Um, he's staying as the GM, but Scott Walker, who's been part of the ownership group, and Scott Walker was the coach of the Storm when they when they won the or when they went to the Memorial Cup final. They won the OHL championship, went to the Memorial Cup finals in London in 2014, and then he kind of left. He he was been coaching other places, including Vancouver Canucks, the last couple of years, and as as an assistant, he's back and uh, he's going to coach the team. And he he just adds you know kind of a different dimension. I, I see him in there, and and you know like it, it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see how how Burnett and Walker work together uh, with this team because that's. That's there's a lot of veteran experience there between those two guys, and um, so I think they'll be very well coached, and they they have very many good play. They they have a lot of good players. I think Flint's going to be good again, which is you know Flint's been a doormat since they came in the league, mostly uh, since they moved from Plymouth. Uh, they were they were kind of like twenty wins every year kind of thing, and then you know there was the whole thing with the owner getting suspended for five years, and it, it was kind of a a bit of a, a you know a tough situation. So now they're they're on the rise, I guess you'd say. And and mm-hmm. last year they had a really good year. And this year uh, I expect them to to have an excellent year and challenge Guelph as well. And, you know, London, you can't count out London, Wind, Windsor, 
uh, it should be a high scoring team again this year and, and Kitchener once down, it, it's going to be, it's going to be really tough. There's going to be a lot of good hockey and, and that's really exciting. I mean, when there's three or four good teams uh, and you kind of know that they're going to win at the end kind of thing, it's not as exciting. It's kind of like, you know, like wrestling where you kind of know the, the yeah. result before it, before it happens kind of thing. Right. So um, th this year, I think, I think there could be a couple of dark horses teams that come up and, you know, and it kind of that kind of bites some of these uh, early favorites. Um, what about the Bulldogs? Because they are the defending champs. Do you think uh, they're going to be they're going to be at it again? Do you think they're they could win it again? Do, what are you what are you <laughs> predicting for that? Uh, I mean, Mason McTavish was such a big part of that team, and and he was like their go to guy, and he's going to play in Anaheim for the Ducks this year. So, you know, that's a big weapon to lose, and. Um, and most teams that went, not too many teams win two in a row. It's 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 tough. London did it. Windsor did it before them uh, about ten years ago. It, it's real tough now. But I, I would say uh, Hamilton with Robbie Thomas won in 2018, and then they won it in 2022. So I, Rachel, if you got any betting money, I, I would throw a future bet on uh, them winning in 2026 again. Okay. <laughs> that seems to be their that every four years they 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 kind of do it. But I, you know I think they'll take a step back. Uh, they, they were so good last year, and and with that, McTavish, that was the best ad probably in junior hockey uh, last year, and it got them right to the, you know, right to the Memorial Cup, and uh, they, they didn't win it, but uh, you know, I I think there's a couple of good teams. Barry was not as good as they were supposed to be last year. They'll they'll be good. Mississauga is always waiting in the weeds. They're a real good team, and I think Peterborough. You know, Peterborough. For for as long as I've covered the team, I, I remember covering OHL final between Peterborough and London about 17 years ago. And uh, Peterborough's a storied, obviously, like the Knights, like Kitchener, like Windsor, storied franchise. And they seem to be on the rise again this year. So I, I think they'll be pretty good, which is exciting for uh, longtime fans of the OHL to see some of these uh, old traditional teams uh, come back and do well. Lots of teams to watch. And of course, when we when they come here and Friday nights at the Bud, we're going to be certainly watching for that. And it'll be some good hockey, um, it sounds like. What what do you think? Who should we be watching for on the nights this year? Who do you think are going to be some of the standout players this year? What what do you think about uh, what we should be looking for? Well, the the night before the season started, the Knights traded seven draft picks, which is a ton of draft picks. It reminds me of trades like John Tavares coming to the Knights and stuff like that for Sam Dickinson, who's a sixteen year old defenseman, and. For, for the maturity level of this kid, he came over from, from Niagara Ice Dogs. He didn't want to play there. So fourth overall pick. It's not so often that the Knights get someone that early in the draft because they're always finishing high that they end up drafting in the 15 to 20 range. So you don't see talent like this all the time unless they're trading for them. And this guy, he, he early on, it's early, early on, but he reminds me of Scott Harrington, who ended up being the captain of the Knights in terms of his at maturity at 16 years old like a, a big guy like one of the biggest guys on the team already and just it, he, he's already got a lot of poise for uh, you watch him in the in the preseason games and he looks pretty good out there and you know this is one of those guys that you would say uh like who on the nights might be a, a first round nhl draft pick or a canadian world junior player down the road and i'd say watch sam dickinson and then of course um you know you got uh, you, you got some good guys at the back end. I mean, uh, you know, Logan Mayu has not played very many games to, uh, in the OHL in, in three or four years from, from the pandemic, from his suspension, from injury. So he, I, I remember everybody told me about him and I watched him a few times in junior B. He's got the talent to be one of the best offensive defensemen in the league. Like he could lead the Knights in scoring as a defenseman. And he's got a powerful shot. He'll start the season uh, injured still but he's going to come back uh, fairly soon so he's got he's got to uh, have a big year for the Knights and then uh, like I said up front uh, the younger guy that Sean McGurn uh, you know he he's the he now that you know Gil Martin's gone but McGurn got 20 goals last year and he should take that next step and get 30 40 goals he I really like the way he handles the puck he, he he's a real master at it and if he can um, if he can get that finish that now that he's 20 years old, he's he's like got that man strength now, and he should be able to bull his way to the net. And he's he's kind of got he's a shifty guy, kind of like the way of not quite in Evangelista's class, but he has those kind of things. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he has a breakout. Plus, obviously, Denver Barkey is one of the. If there's anybody that remind me a bit of Mitch Marner uh, since Mitch left uh, six years ago, I'd say Barkey has it. He's a 
he's a, he's a smaller player, but he he's not afraid to get in there and get in the corners and make plays in tight, which, uh, you know, there's all, uh, the fans will obviously that gravitate towards him because he, he, he gives it his all on every shift and it's exciting. He, he's one of those pull you out of your seat type of players, right? Him and Easton Cowan, uh, you know, Kamoka, he's been around, Easton Cowan grew up here watching the Knights and he, he's, I, I think he's going to have a phenomenal year and both are in the other NHL draft year. So that's, it's an important year for them and all the scouts will be, you know, filling the Bud Gardens uh, stands or, you know, press box or, or, or uh, suites to, to watch these guys. And play. looking for them. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, sounds like we've got a great uh, season coming up, an exciting one, a little different than last year, of course, but <laughs> I'm sure it'll be exciting to watch some good hockey on Friday nights. And we're, we're glad they're back. Go Knights go. Yeah. You know, Rachel, I just hope, I, I remember there's about five or six games where I had to sit in the stands by my, or in the press box by myself. There's nobody else in the rink. Oh. And it was, it, you know, I could hear all the players talking on the ice and the referees talking to them. And as, as interesting as that was, it was kind of sad. It, it'll be much better. I, I know there's the cr crowds are expected to be back to what they were pre pandemic. And that's really exciting. And I'm excited that people are not so fearful. They're ready to get in groups again and that uh, things should be pretty much back to normal. And we'll keep our fingers crossed that they stay back to normal that they for, stay for, that for way. the entire season. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Thank you, Ryan. I'm sure we're going to uh, check in with you throughout the season and we'll uh, keep up to date with all your stories on lfpress.com. Thank you.